Many thanks for the kind instruction. My grand pleasure to attend and address the International Wood Culture Symposium sponsored by IWCS. It's a good opportunity for me to learn from all of you. My presentation is themed that um, our religious philosophy view on the seamless uh, connection between life and the man and with the trees. For, tree, for wood culture in China, we have a long way, a different perspective from a history perspective, archaeology, biology, uh, genetics, uh, um, maybe a religion, maybe environmental geography, architecture, biology, and also the aesthetics. We can approach it from different views. However, among the different uh, paths I chosen, the different academic uh, view, that is uh, the religious and the philosoph philosophical perspective. Through religious and philosophical perspective, I will give analysis to the correlation between man and the wood, in particular for the for emotionally and perceptionally philosophy, that is harmony between man and nature, that is Taoism and the philosophy in China. For the better interpretation, for me, I will approach it from four areas. Number one, the attribute of uh, the wood. Number two is the blood uh, correlation between wood and the ancestors. Number three is the is a chronicle uh, a company between wood and ancestors. Number four is the different uh, uh, the counterparts of um, wood and uh, the Asian ancestors. So I approach from the four different ideas. Uh, am I uh, presentation comes from three theories. For me, the three theories thesis was are uh, publicized on different uh, uh, periodicals. For me, first, uh, what's the the characteristics of wood? People talk about the egoism. Egoism. Uh, is uh, the philosophy. This is the origin of uh, the earth, so origin of the universe, and origin of life. So we put a wood as a part of our origin. Why people have uh, this uh, recognition of uh, wood? Because, because it comes from the attribute of a wood. Because when you see the wood, you see something gigantic. In China, f uh, in, in many different uh, classics, including certain pre Qin Dynasty literature, you can see the gigantic trees in ancient China. For a human being, a human being is definite. He's not big in size as compared to the trees. So, here, for the trees, back is higher than a human being. So. That means human being can have the imagination of indefinite owing to the trees, gigantic figure. Figure in the uh, virgin forest, we have see we see the forest with a thousand of years, and these years far surpass the the cycle for human being. For people, maybe our longevity is 100 year old. Well, for trees, they are much longer, and. Uh, and uh, in terms of their form, in terms of their longevity, they are really indefinite compared to the definite uh, human being. So we have the definition of, uh, we have the imaginary uh, for indefinite. So for wood, is from the indefinite to the indefinite, the pursuit of human philosophy. So here, with the existence of wood, it's kind of a it's kind of a deity in the eyes of the common people. We put uh, the wood as God as a deity, so we have certain worship to the wood. The wood is not only environment and ambiance, rather people view it as something beyond the quality of life. They worship it as a deity, as a god. They want to put in more emotional and sentimental attachment to it. Second, 
is the blood relation between the trees and uh, the ancestor. We put the trees as the origin of life, as a deity, as the god, as the ego of uh, the universe. So how can we connect these two? First of all, through our perspective, we can see trees have uh, the same reproductive process. There's a totemium in the past, totem in the past, the totem concept in the past. For the totem, they believe the trees participate in the reproduction of human being. They believe the trees are the ancestors of a human being. According to this totem, for the reproduction, they believe the, the bisexual, by gender process, so they believe trees are the ancestors. They put as a, the maternity or fraternity, or paternity. So here, in the legendary, in the ancient legend, you can see the child bearing by trees. Professor Wang talked about the, the story in Japan. Totalum comes from the peach, comes from the peach trees. And in China, come to a certain legend for Yilang, so that the colloquial Yilang was coming from bamboo. And, uh, and also during the Yin, Yin Shang Dynasty, uh, Yin, a minister came from mulberry trees. So we have the different legendary tales depicting the totem in which the, totem, the, the trees give birth to human being. We have a lot of legendaries and tales for that. For these legendary tales, in the uh, Monkey King or the Pilgrim to the West, we have the depiction. And in the 24th chapter, people are talking about uh, a kind of fruit, a particular fruit. The fruit, this kind of fruit is a human figuring fruit. So that's the combination of the two. That's the fruit by the human being and uh, the trees. So you can see this is reproductive uh, relations between my ancestors and the trees. You can see a lot of our family names come back to that. This is the camphor tree. The camphor tree, this is a very famous one. The, it can be there for thousands of years. This is a red fir in New Zealand. This is tot totem and uh, family names, surnames. They put uh, the uh, totem, according to totem, the trees are on the same line with the human being. You can see a lot of uh, radicals come from the word uh, tree in China. And we have a surname Ling, uh, Chu, Song, uh, Bai, Yang, Liu, Li, Du. Those are the three names of uh, the pine, cypress, uh, aspirin, mulberry, or chestnut. So they are reflecting the traditional totem concept. And man and nature are connected. So this is kind of a typical concept of totem. Certainly, the coexistence of uh, mankind and uh, trees. I'd like to explain that from the perspective of the architecture and uh, home furniture within the same space, how they can coexist. And after listening to Professor Harry Green's uh, presentation, in terms of the architecture for the uh, purpose of uh, nostalgia and uh, men are returning to use the wood for their houses it's quite enlightening for me so from the perspective of the architecture and in china we have two styles of architecture 
in south and in north, respectively. In the south, in the Yangtze River Delta. In the north, many in the Yellow River Delta. For the Yellow River Delta, uh, the Many lived in the caves, or in the south, uh, they lived uh, in those uh, tree houses. And we have the Banpo culture. They lived in the caves, and they kind of semi uh, cave uh, culture. And then they moved to the uh, land, to the ground. And also in the early cave, they also used uh, wood to help them. And then after relocated to the uh, ground, they also have the Gong Xuan architecture. For the Gong Palace, it composes uh, of uh, different uh, houses. So we have uh, this kind of uh, typical architecture with columns. And in the Yanti River Delta, at that time, many in the tree houses. Just now, after listening to Professor Wang Xufeng's uh, presentation, God lives in the forest. It's a very, quite a good uh, presentation. We have something in common. In China, in the Yanti River Delta, in the south, we have a lot of trees. So we have those kind of tree houses. However, it's not kind of a typical uh, architecture. It's not uh, the unique in China. In other places, we also have those kind of tree houses. I'm not saying that we have this kind of wood era, or the wood era came before the Stone Age. However, we did have such kind of tree houses. Maybe they live in harmony, they coexist. And we also need more evidence to support that. In Zhejiang Yuyao Hemudu site, we found such kind of uh, Ganlan architecture. So this uh, character Jin, it means uh, those kind of uh, uh, house on three rows of uh, the um, piles. As you can see from the shape of this uh, character, three uh, columns, and we have this uh, roof, and we have similar houses in Laos. And uh, typical minority houses. So from the architectural perspective, uh, from the Zhou Dynasty, we have uh, the uh, Kao Gong Ji. And also to Song Dynasty, we have uh, those kind of architectural styles. So China has a very unique old uh, culture. So in terms of the architecture, our ancestors used the wood as uh, the uh, construction materials. So we have those kind of uh, um, fountains for wood. Maybe uh, this is kind of a typical farming culture in China. And uh, how about uh, the uh, other nationalities uh, in elsewhere? Just because of those kind of uh, uh, feeling of fondness for wood, we have uh, this kind of towers. That's why we have the complexity between human being to wood. It's not like a pyramid in Egypt or Babylon but temples. They are the stone ones which can stay until today, survive until today. But unfortunately for the wood constructions, you know, wood is easy to catch fire and to erode. So what we have now is the Yingxian, uh, the wood pagoda in Shanxi province. This, it, it, it was built uh, less, uh, around 1,000 years ago, but this wood pagoda is dedicated in construction 
at the representative of uh, the sophistication of a Chinese uh, wood building technique. China, for this uh, whether China failed to put a rock or stone in the construction, why? Because in China, for Yingxian, it was built in the Liao Dynasty in 1056. For the Zhao, Zhao, Zhao Zhou Bridge was built in earlier than that. This built of stone, it was built earlier than the Yingxian Wood Pagoda. Because Chinese have good mastery of the difference between wood and stone for durability. So why Chinese chose to choose wood as the building material for houses? Why in China, in Chinese philosophical and religi religious uh, concept, uh, they believe wood is something with life. Something with life. For a house, should have something in life. So that's why the Ch Asian Chinese chose uh, wood instead of rock or stone as a construction material. They believe there's something vivid in wood. So in living in wood-built buildings, they will have the kind of uh, echoing of the life between man and wood. That's the wood complex. Apart from wood, uh, buildings will have a lot of furniture made of wood. We can see the different uh, good varieties of uh, raw, raw woods in particular. They, they are the rare and uh, precious ones for the wood, for the, for the sandal wood and uh, for those uh, other areas wood. They are very precious and rare. We can see the furniture in Ming and Qing dynasties. You can see that. So they chose uh, wood as the material for furniture. And also, Chinese have a specific attachment to wood. The specific attachment is not only for the fine quality wood, in addition, for those are with our, for those, those with sickness, for this we call it what, W-A-R-T, what, for the water wood is something with a certain, uh, certain uh, bad parts within it. So they still believe this is something uh, tradable and valuable. So this is uh, even the wood with a certain, this is for the uh, holder, for the tea uh, holder. This is for even for some birds, they still li like it. And uh, they have uh, the synchronic uh, nature between man and between human beings and the trees. On the other hand, from a diachronic perspective, there is a counterpart and a correspondence between human being and the forest. That means uh, they have the birth together with it, and uh, even after death, they want to live together with uh, the wood as well. So for the people when people died, passed away, they have two words. That is uh, for the coffins. Coffin word. Come, they have the radicals of wood as part of a Chinese culture. So in this are uh, philosophy, in this are uh, burying, burial uh, philosophy. They have the the coffins made of wood, or with uh, the bottles, or they have the coffins made of wood. For China, they pay attention to the coffins made of wood because. Uh, they, they, when they are alive, they use the wood to build their homes. And after that, they still want to live around the wood. That's the wood coffin. So that's the, the kind of something perpetual in their life. After that, you are, you have the resurrection in another world. This is another life. So that's why Chinese people, they prefer the coffin of wood in life. They want to live in this environment, and then later on, in another world, they want to the similar environment in the second life. Therefore, for the coffins, should be made of high quality thick wood, so that they can be corruption free. So, in their ancient book of rituals, 
they have that particular wording that is uh, for the emperors, for the kings, and for the ministers. For different uh, hierarchies, they use different uh, materials for wood coffin. When you life live around and within the wood, uh, after death, death, they still want to be living together, they be dying together with the wood. So you can see the Chinese are characters. I found one particular word. I was happy with the word. That is the word "shu uh, rest" in Chinese. Rest. Uh, rest. You can. There are two parts of the Chinese character. The main part uh, to the right hand one is wood. To the left hand, that's radical. That is a human being. So that's a combination of a human being and wood. That means you are at rest. So rest. You can be at rest. Number two is uh, die or disease or death. The third interpretation is uh, something beautiful. So that's interpretation of a uh, shu. This uh, character in Chinese. So the, 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 you can see the contradiction and the power and the paradox among this one. So we have the coexistence between life and the death. You use the word to describe life, and also you use the word to describe death. So between life and the death. In Chinese, uh, ancestors, uh, philosophical and religious concept, they can be one. So after disease, that will be the beginning of a new life. So put together, they have the holistic approach to the word xiu, rest. Whether life or dead, if you are together with the wood, life is good. If you are together with the wood, life is good. So that's the rest. It's a representative of the system of the emotional and sentimental attachment. That almost, uh, so from a frame, we know the relations between man and the forest. In the following, I want to touch upon the philosophy is a culture, but the culture itself should be purified. For any culture without purification, it will not survive and thrive. It will be opposite to human beings. So for international wood culture, we believe it needs, we need purification. So through cleaning, through purification, we have a combination of research, study, and uh, industrialization. So that we can expand our market uh, to, to upgrade our productivity so that uh, we can make more processing technologies. But this is not ultimate goal. I, as I said, ultimate goal is uh, the wood culture will be more clean, will be cl much cleaner from both the material and the spiritual perspective, so that so the wood uh, culture biology we can influence the people's and people's behavior now and in the future. This is my expectation. Thank you all.